My name's Arthur Allen, I'm a fifth generation Gippsland Lakes fisherman. Uh, our family dates back to settlement in this area and this is my son Matthew who makes the sixth generation of our family in the Gippsland Lakes. The town you see today is a completely different sort of town to the, the town I grew up in. Uh, now predominantly it's, it's a retirement tourist destination type town. Uh, when I was a child fishing was the, the major industry. And ironically, that's why Lakes has developed into what it is now, because it was the fishing industry that attracted people here on holidays, and the charm and the romance of fishing, I suppose, is why people wanted to come here. I've always wanted to be a fisherman. It's something I've always dreamed of doing. And I was lucky April this year, I got the opportunity to start with Dad full time, and I'll stay that way, fishing with him. I lived here until I was 21, and then I took a job in Benstow and then got promoted and moved to Sale and I lived there for the last seven years and I've uh, just recently moved back when the position was made available. Oh well we're, we're pretty biblical in our approach. Uh, we use what are very very traditional techniques which is gill nets or mash nets as they're called and a haul seam which is where you put a net out in a semicircle and then haul it into the shore and close the fish down into a sock or a bag at the back of the net. Uh, and it's pretty much by hand, uh, so yeah, we're very traditional in what we do. Uh, the main target fish for us is brim. Uh, we do get other species, flathead, mullet, ludric, carp, but uh, definitely brim's our target fish. Uh, it's very popular down in Melbourne in all the restaurants, so we're happy to catch them every day. Dale Sumner, General Manager of the Lakes Entrance Fishermen's Co-op. My responsibilities here are all the day-to-day -day, uh, responsibilities I guess that go with running a business including the uh, finance and accounting and all that sort of stuff. So it was built in about 1964 and opened by Sir Henry Bolte in 1968 so essentially it's been doing the same thing since then uh, as it is today. So Lakes Entrance I guess the co-op itself has about 4,000 tonnes of fish come in or 4 million kilos of fish come in every year so that's spread out right over the year. So living in lakes during those times when the tourist numbers um, explode, I guess, that's obviously when seafood consumption or seafood demand locally is very high. So it's a very much a hive of activity to try and supply that demand that comes when people come to Lakes Entrance, I guess, and expect to eat um, fresh local seafood. So Lakes Entrance owes a lot to those tourists that come here every year because a lot of the infrastructure and services that we have here only happen because we have those tourists coming. Arthur's one of those people that I rely on heavily to, to feed me information about the Gippsland Lakes and historical fishing information that's happened on the lakes over the years. So things like uh, when blue-green algae has been happening on the lakes forever, um, all those sorts of things I rely on people such as Arthur to um, give me the information that I need when I have to go and do representations to government or other agencies. The first rule I suppose is that it's a community owned resource and the co-op provides in our instances, uh, a receiving point, a cool store to keep fish in. Uh, they then transport them on and uh, ice. And uh, more and more, I suppose, in the, the political climate these days, uh, the co-op is, is the body through which we uh, interact with government. There's 10 licensed fishermen working on the Gippsland Lakes and we have probably about 30 ocean-going vessels working out of Lakes Entrance at the moment. The Gippsland Lakes in the early days of settlement were the main transport route. Uh, there was no roads, there was a train come to sail in 1870, but predominantly transport was by water and a lot of the transport between Lakes Melbourne and Sydney was by sea. 
So not far from where we're standing here, I guess, or in the picture behind me is actually uh, evidence of one of the a man-made channel opening for uh, navigation of um, the old uh, steamers, etc., to take produce up into the Gippsland Lakes. About 1880, the Victorian government decided to put in a permanent entrance, basically to facilitate trade. But one of the spin-offs was that from that was that it uh, developed lakes as a as a fishing port because it gave access to Bass Strait. So the entrance was pivotal to the district, really. The fishing's been very good the last 18 months, consistently. So hopefully it keeps going that way. Love living in Lakes Entrance, five minutes away from work to go home of a day, or get to work of a morning. So no hours on end in traffic and very happy camper. The one thing that's uh, sort of made me very satisfied in recent times is the fact that Matthew has chosen to come back and and take on the family tradition. Uh, you know, certainly something that I didn't want to see die out with me and I'm more than pleased that I can hand it on to the next generation and hopefully the next generation. I, I think that's what it's about. It's, it's not what's there for us, it's what's there for the future.